Earth ships, they are sustainable homes that are 100% off the grid. They collect their own water, make electricity through solar and wind energy, and always are 70 degrees on the inside. So the Earth ships not only help your utility bill, but are friendly to the environment. So we first brought you this story on Earth Day on GMSA, and Sarah Costa joins us in the studio to talk about these fascinating homes. Good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. Sarah, glad you're here. So what sparked your interest in these homes? Well, forecasting change and environment is my beat. Um, but also, I just was watching YouTube a couple of weeks ago, and this documentary on Earth ships came up, and I just, you know, went down the rabbit hole. So I had to learn all about it. So what I learned is a 1970s architect, Michael Reynolds, he invented this concept of Earth ships, homes that can function independently and are also sustainable and friendly to planet Earth. So Earth ships are built with natural and recycled materials like tires, bottles, you can see them putting the mud in the tires there, uh, cans with energy conservation in mind, and Earth ships are uniquely designed to produce their own water and their own electricity and food for the people that live in them. So get this, they are always 70 degrees inside, no matter if it's, you know, 20 degrees outside or 100 degrees outside. The Using a system of thermal mass, aka what you saw earlier, those tires packed with soil and a passive solar heating system. Conventional housing is almost like being sort of on a life support system in a way. You know, the only way that that conventional building can exist is with all these tubes and wires, you know, being connected up to it and mechanically sustaining it, where the earth ship has, has none of that. So every drop of water that lands on the roof of an earthship is used four times over. So first, of course, purified for drinking and then showering, and then it goes to flushing toilets. And that gray water is used to water the plants. Uh, you know, these homes are built with um, green greenhouses in them. So those homes can subsist and even thrive without taking water from the ground or municipal sources. So that's the big thing is not only does it help your wallet with, you know, these high bills and stuff, but also um, it it helps the earth, you know, it's it's environmentally friendly. On so many levels. Yeah, and 70 degrees all the time. That sounds good too. <laughs> right, because if I have it on 70 degrees all the time in my house, I don't like the bill that I get. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Know? Fair enough. You know, and speaking of that, you know, where are most of these built and can they build be built anywhere like in San Antonio. Yeah, so that's the thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of them are built in New Mexico. They actually have an Earthship community in Taos there, and that's where they started. That's where the architect Michael Reynolds is from. And so they are built ideally for that environment. Now they do have Earthships all over the world. Uh, Phil Basehart was telling me also they have one. They have one in Crockett, Texas. They have okay. them in Puerto Rico and a lot of these countries. They have a nonprofit as well, so they go and build in in countries and in communities that don't have um, that are poor and they don't have access to you know good shelter. And so they build them earthships, and they're like a long time solution that they don't have to have these you know, connections mm -hmm. to, you know, running water and all these things. I was scanning through your article on KSAT.com and looking at the story. I, I know that tires and cans are common just about anywhere. Yeah. The first thing I wanted to scan, I scanned through to talk about how much this was all going to cost. These can run up to a oh, yeah. million dollars. Yeah, so some of so them how are can people afford to get into one of these earth ships? Yeah, so some are million dollar homes. Um, but so they have a program. It's like their Earth Ship Academy. Mm -hmm. And it's a four step program and you get in and for four weeks you learn all about what Earth Ships are. Then you take an online course and then you actually spend several weeks on, out in the field building them. Um, and then you get certified to build your own. So when I was talking to Phil Basehart, who actually builds these, lives in one of these, he was telling me, um, yeah, a lot of millennials who feel like they yet yeah, this rate will never be able to afford a home of their own. Okay, well, why don't we build one and build one that is a sustainable option? So not all of them are the million dollar models that we're seeing, you know, uh, like that one right there is sure. beautiful. Some of them are just very simple, smaller homes that people can build on their own once they learn and take this course. They look cool, but are there any challenges actually building them? So code is a thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, they said it's a direct conflict with a lot of in, uh, oh, they, existing uh, codes for cities and counties, yeah. right? So, so like building this kind in the city of San Antonio would be very difficult because okay. if you know if you've ever you know been a homeowner, um, code is 
is a thing. You know, you have to get things passed if you're going to be plugging into the city's water and electricity, S gas, sewage. But the mm -hmm. thing is, a lot of these don't plug into those. Right. Things. So right. they're saying code's always an issue. But if you're out in the county, in the rural county, mm -hmm. and you're not plugging into any city or county right. you know, utilities, you're fine. They sure. said that is usually, you know, that's your land. Do it however you want to do it. That's amazing stuff. It really, really is. And that's why most of these are going to be rural. The other interesting thing from Sarah's article I, that I, my takeaway is that uh, from the rain catchment system, that water is used at least four times. Yeah. Drinking, bathing, uh, dishwashing, sewage, everything. everything. And they only need about seven inches of water to do that. However, there are issues. Uh -huh. So this is like, oh, it sounds too good to be true. <laughs> Whoops, okay, here's the catch. So okay. I do want to point out yes. that it would be very difficult to build one in San Antonio. They they have different ways around it. They said if you live in a place that's 60 percent humidity, mm -hmm. um, oh. mold can be a problem oh. with how the walls are built okay. because during the winter condensation builds up on those really thick walls that sure. are insulated because they have these, you know, the, oh. the airway systems where air naturally comes in and out. And if we have humid air coming in, mm -hmm. um, you know, but they, they do make adjustments to different areas. Hmm. Um, but that's uh, why there's a big community in New Mexico. Yes, right. that's where they started. And our climate is typically, unless you're outside the winter months, Justin, we're, we're over 60% humidity yes. uh, by and large, right? <laughs> <laughs> Justin's over here like, there's yeah, yeah, no yeah, way. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. Um, but another issue um, is the resale an insuring option. Ah, okay. Uh, so basically, like, if this is going to be like your investment home, right? Sure. Like, I'm going to go out into the county and be, you know, by myself. Be, mm -hmm. I want to be off the grid. Um, it's going to, it might be hard to resell. It might be a home that you just live in for the rest of your life. Sure. And then getting them insured is also ah. a whole nother thing. In Taos, they actually have an insurance company that insures them because they are so popular there. Oh, gotcha. Okay. So if you really want to do this, you're really going to want to do it. And you're going to have to persevere and kind of follow through. Yeah. yeah there's a lot of steps. Um, if you're not building in a climate like New Mexico, right. like I'm sure these would do really well, like in a Marfa or Marathon in West there Texas. There you go. Or yeah. North Texas where it's dry. There's sure. a lot of sun. Um, it, well, and a lot of rural area out yeah. there. <laughs> Not well, in San Antonio. Well, Not anytime soon. You know, we, I'm sure you can do it in San Antonio because he said there's always ways around it. It's like we make adjustments for every environment. They have them in Puerto Rico and it's very humid there. Well, there you go. Yeah, so that's there, are, there are ways yeah. around it. You're just not okay. building the model ship that, you know, are the big ones out in New Mexico. Got you. Okay, when we win Powerball, we'll set up our community yes. out in West Texas somewhere. <laughs> yes, I was talking to our news director, Bernice, and she's like, how do I get one? I was like, right. oh, I'm ready, like, planning I'll this. walk you through it. It's just going to take a while. Yeah, a lot okay. of work, but well worth it. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. Sarah Costa's story is online at ksat.com. Check it out. Thanks, Thanks guys. You. Thank you, Sarah.